12 months ago today, Hamas unleashed terror, invading southern Israel, killing more than 1,200 people and taking over 240 Jewish hostages back into Gaza, the biggest single loss of Jewish life since the Holocaust. It sparked a campaign of retribution from Israel, which has now spread to Lebanon and threatens the entire Middle East. Tonight, vigils are being held around the country amid tight security. Our reporters are at two of the biggest gatherings and Sam Cucciara joins me now from Melbourne. Sam, the demonstrators there are on the march heading to Parliament House. Is it a big turnout? What's happening there? Things are very peaceful here at the moment, Deb. Uh, it's a very quiet, very sombre mood um, that these protesters are right now making the two kilometre trek from St Kilda Road to the steps of the Victorian Parliament. This is a silent protest, unlike many of the other big rallies we've seen in Melbourne uh, over this past year. They're marching to the sound of a single beating drum, uh, which our cameraman is pointing out to you now. There are also uh, some men here holding stretchers and they uh, represent the lives lost in this casualty. Now, earlier on, the Victorian Premier Jacinta Allen warned people not to attend these pro-Palestinian rallies today. Uh, she told them to show some respect and it appears that in part has worked. Only around two to 300 people uh, have turned out here tonight. And there's a big police presence, we can see it behind you. Are there symbols of, of hate or terrorist groups being displayed at all? Things are quite uh, calm here at the moment. No symbols of hate uh, that we've been able to see in the crowd. Uh, as you say, there are a fair few police uh, dotted on the edges um, of this march. They're walking with the protesters uh, to the parliament uh, where there are more police at the moment um, awaiting these uh, activists and also uh, there are a number of other protesters already who've set up camp uh, with some flags uh, there on the steps of the parliament. And while this is happening, Sam, the Prime Minister has just arrived at a, t a memorial happening with the Jewish community. What's happening on that front? So that's at a, uh, a secret uh, location in a suburb of Moorabbin, around uh, 30 minutes away from the city. Uh, we're not able to tell you the location uh, of that, other than to say it is a large space uh, because of security risks. Now, the Prime Minister, as you say, uh, the former Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews uh, is there, as, and uh, the Victorian Premier Jacinta Allen is also expected to attend uh, there tonight. We're told that the crowd uh, is in the thousands, uh, and that has really exceeded the expectations okay. uh, of the organisers there. It's certainly going to be a very big, uh, busy night for police as they remain on alert uh, across Melbourne. Sam, thank you. Simon Boda joins me now from Town Hall in Sydney. Simon, what's happening there? Has there been any threat of violence? Deb, there's been no threat of violence at all. Um, there's been a number of speeches. This vigil's been going for about an hour. There's been a number of speeches, some prayers. Um, there's probably about 500 people here, between four and 500 people. But I've got to say, I think they're almost outnumbered by the number of police that are here. Now, unlike that demonstration in Melbourne, this is a static vigil. This will not be moving from in front of the town hall here at all. It's going to go for about two hours. Obviously, if there's any attempt to march on the Sydney streets, there will be police stopping those marches going anywhere. And it is the police presence visible there behind you too. A very busy night for police because there are other gatherings in Sydney. There's the Jewish vigil happening and another pro-Palestinian demonstration happening in Lakemba. Sure is, Deb. Well, I mean, there's about a thousand extra police that have been rostered on for these demonstrations tonight. Um, here alone, I would think there'd be probably five to six hundred police officers. It's literally a ring of blue around the people that are attending so that they can't leave and try and march the streets. At Vaucluse, there's about 10,000 people taking part in a Jewish people taking part in a vigil there. And about 30 kilometres away at the Kemba, at the main mosque, is another vigil. Now, I believe there's about 1,000 people there. They've been chanting Free Palestine. They've been waving their flags and their banners. But again, that's a static vigil. It is not moving, Deb. So that threat of violence has not eventuated at this stage in either Sydney or in Melbourne. Sam and Simon, thank you.
Around the world, the divide between Arabs and Jews is so deep there appears to be little hope of peace. But there are those trying to tread the middle ground. A group called Standing Together brings Jews and Palestinians together inside Israel. And I'm joined now by two of the group's leaders, Dr Shahad Bashara and Nadav Shofet. Welcome to you both. Nadav, you're an Israeli Jew and Shahad, you're an Arab Palestinian. With so much bloodshed and with emotions running as high as they are, how difficult is it for you, Shahad, to be standing together? Is it difficult? It's not difficult. It is, uh, I mean, it's a duty right now that we come together, stand in solidarity between Arabs, uh, Palestinian Arab citizens of Israel and Jewish amidst all this chaos, grief from both sides it's mutual and we need to find a way forward together. There appears though to be so much hatred between Jews and Arabs and Nadav people would assume that you both are mortal enemies. No so of course of course we we are not we are um, you know together in this fight for for a better future for a future that goes down the path not of war but of peace um, and I think I think when um, I think when you when you focus in on the on the actual people, and you um, understand that we do have the common interest in a future that is peaceful, in safety, in independence, um, then we understand that that we can work together, and we are not not only are we not enemies, but we are we are really um, true partners uh, in this fight. Right now, the streets of Sydney and Melbourne here in Australia are blocked off by pro-Palestinian demonstrators. Shahad, do these demonstrations and gatherings make any difference to what is happening on the ground in the Middle East? At the moment, I don't see any effect. I think maybe, maybe international and global pressure may help right now, but a real change will come within Israel from the people themselves. And have you... Nadav had friends or family killed or taken hostage. I know of people in my circles who have been um, who have been killed, and um, and you know in my larger circles definitely people who have been taken hostage. It's it's unfathomable that we are now one year into this and hostages are still in captivity, still held by Hamas. Um, and we, and you know, this is just such a horrible day. You know, we just woke up here in Israel, and the um, the heaviness of the day is already so present. And it's all these emotions together. And we know that our government is not only not trying to, you know, bring back the hostages, but is actively thwarting any any deals. And I and I hope and fight for their return, you know, as soon as possible. And what about you, Shahad? Have you had family or loved ones caught up, so many innocent civilians, with Gaza being targeted by Israeli rockets? I do. I do have relatives in the West Bank, uh, which keeps me somehow worried about uh, not only my relatives. Though. It, 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 keeps me, it keeps me worried about the overall situation of the region. I mean... It, of the area that we live in, in the, of the area that we call home. But Nadav, was it always inevitable that it would go this way in light of the terrible events of a year ago? I don't think I don't think anything is inevitable. And uh, you know, the, the atrocious Hamas attack on October seventh was, I think, in a lot of ways, an earth-shattering event for this for this region. But we, the people on the ground, still have a choice. These are human things. We have agency and we can change our future and we can advance towards a better future. Nothing is inevitable. You're both coming to Australia next month for a speaking tour. And Shahad, you're a medical doctor. What's your group doing to try to influence the Israeli government? What are you trying to achieve by standing together in this way? We are trying to build a big partnership with other peace organizations so we can actually bring this course of peace to a, to more to the public and to somehow try to change the status quo in, in some way. This is being called the forever war. Do you really hold out hope that peace 
in the Middle East between Israel and Palestine will ever be achieved? Definitely. Definitely. We not only hold it as uh, hope, uh, we, we, we know that it is possible. Uh, wars end, conflicts end, um, you know, occupations end. And, and we know that the people on the ground, we know them, we live with, with, with them, we live here, and we know the people on the ground just want to live in prosperity and safety and independence and, and just live their lives. Do you hold the same hope, Shahat? Hope is an action, and as Martin Luther King once said, the supreme task is to organize people that their anger will become a transforming force. And this is what we're doing in Standing Together. We're trying to organize people toward a future, future without occupation, a future that both Israeli Jews and Palestinian live in peace, equality, and dignity. Well, we thank you both for joining us. Nadav and Shahad, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. And standing together, something the world could use more of right now. Nadav and Shahad, as they mentioned, are coming to Australia next month to continue the push for peace in the Middle East.